So here we have the Canon XF405. And uh, here's the Canon XF400. And uh, hello, so who are you? I'm, uh, my name's Paul, and I'm the product specialist for Pro Video and Cinema Rios for Canon Europe. And uh, this is the new, uh, very exciting new camera here from Canon. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at the XF400. And this is a 4K 60 or 4K 50 frames per second support. Uh, high bit rate with a dual pixel AF. Lots of stuff in there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's our first uh, camcorder, traditional style camcorder, to have the dual uh, CMOS dual pixel AF system. Um, it provides a very fast and very capable uh, autofocus system, ideal for the single shooter. And you can nice thing on this as well is that once it's set up, you can just select your focus point by touching the screen. So, and it's very fast autofocus? Yeah. Um, what you can do though is you can regulate it, so you can change the speed, you can change the sensitivity as well. Can we try to focus on the camera there? Yeah, sure. And uh, so, can you show the, the bokeh? Because it's, it's got a one inch sensor, yep. it's able to do some nice bokeh effect. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I got it. Cinema lens. So, cinema lens. Yeah. Right there. Um, so it's got a nice big sensor with uh, lots of functionalities around it. Also, lots of uh, what do you call it? I iris frames, or what do you call it? Uh, so we've got face detection and face priority. So it's picking up a face. And that's a far away zoom. Yeah, it's a time. Find somebody very far away over there. Zoom on this. As so we can also change the sensitivity of the zoom and speed. Uh, can we go in the menu to check out the codecs that you have and the frame rates? So this is a new UI style for Canon. A little bit new. We do. We have a 4K, 150 megabit per second. So it's an H.264. Um, and then you can choose the frame rate. You have 25 and 50, right? This is yeah, a PAL right. model right here. Yeah. And uh, it's also touch screen, so you can go around in the menu like this. 25 and 50. And um, the format. Oh, sorry. Uh, and the format. That's for the audio. Sorry. For the audio. And there, there will be a firmware update with XF. AVC, right? What does that mean? Um, that's the similar codec to we see on um, other XF cameras and the Cinema EOS. That'll be the XF AVC wrapper that, uh, codec that we use with an MXF wrapper. So it's a different codec or is it still H.264? It's, it's still H.264, it's just a different, a different flavor wrapper. of... Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's still going to be the same? Do you talk about bit rates on that one? Uh, it's going to be 4208 bit. 4208 8-bit? 4208 bit. 8-bit? 8 8 and uh, but it's still going to be 150 megabit per second. Right? As far as I'm aware, yeah, we're still working on the details of that, but it will be available sort of uh, early 2018. All right, that's the main functionality of the firmware update, right? It's the only one you you know. That's announced. the only one that I know of. Yeah, and then you have uh, around here you have dual SD card slots. So, so we can do relay recording. Uh, so when card A is filled up, card B starts automatically, or we can have um, dual recording um, until you get an instant backup. And uh, is this a fan? What's going on over here? Yeah, but obviously being a 4K camera, there's an awful lot of uh, heat potentially generated. So we've got a, a new uh, design on the cooling system, but it's uh, it's a fairly quiet one. Uh, from what I can, what I've been able to pick up so far. So this is the XF400, uh, which has um, right here. It has Ethernet right here, which the GX10 doesn't have Ethernet, right? Uh, no, I don't think it does. And here is HDMI. You can, can you output? Uh, so the HDMI output on this is possible to go to 4K. Uh, again, 4208 bit. Uh, or you can have through the SDI or the 405, uh, you can have uh, 422 10 bit. 422 10 bit on the SDI? On the SDI, okay. Okay, to an external device. And uh, right here you include this this uh, microphone holder that yep. goes there, but it's easy to take it off. Yes, absolutely, it just screws. 
those two screws yep. and uh, is it possible to put something else here? Do you have other kind of things that fit uh, we, we don't, but I'm sure there'll be um, third party devices that... Because I'd like to have my shotgun mic here yep. and to have my wireless receiver here okay. uh, instead of having the shotgun go here. So possibly, maybe there could be, otherwise there's some all, all kinds of ways people have more things. Yep. Because you have dual XLR inputs. Yep. So, and is it possible to mix both XLR to be uh, stereo on both channels? Uh, I'd have to go in and play with it. These things literally arrived a few days before the show, so I've not had time to sit down and play with it, if I'm completely honest. They're that new. Um, you can have four channel with set, you can have separate channels quite definitely, um, because it's one of the things that we say is if you're using this to interview, you use the onboard mic or 3.5mm mic to get the ambient and then channel one would be the interviewer, channel two the interviewee. So you can use mini jack and both yeah. XLR at the same yeah, time? Yeah, but the, the mini jack has to be a powered microphone, there's no power from it. Nice. And, uh, so that could be a, a one thing here, there's three mics, plus the built-in mic? Yeah, but if, if, no, you can't use the built-in mic and the 3.5mm, okay. so that's where the, uh, the capability okay. stops. Uh. All right, that's really cool. And then uh, there's all kinds of ways to mix it up. Yeah. To do the and it's possible to take this off. Yeah, it does. But then you lose the XLR cable. And there's no three rings. There's just one. But you can select to do all kinds of different yeah. things. So you can select it to do focus or zoom. And you can change the ND filters right yeah. there. Melting glass filters are rotated in the system like the new Cinemarios the new Cinemarios cameras. And uh, you also have some wide angle kind of like adapter in the front? Yep, there's a wide angle adapter and there's a telephoto adapter going to be available as well. And that basically, it's already quite wide, right? 25 mm? 25.5, I think, 35 is 35 mm. And if you use that adapter, it just becomes even... A little bit wider, yeah, but then you have to, you have to, you have to remember to go into the menu and tell you're using the wide adapter as well. How's the autofocus performance if you use the wide? Is it be um, as good? It seems to be just as good, yeah, because it's designed to fit in with that system. Um, it's it's optically it's matched with the rest of the lens. So, so uh, dual pixel AF is yeah. kind of like famous as the best autofocus system in the world, right? Yeah, um, it's it's really really fast and accurate autofocus system, um, and for people who are working on their own. It's, it's invaluable, it really is. The nice thing is as well, if you've seen the Cinema Rios cameras, they have the uh, focus assist feature, and that's using the, the dual pixel AF technology on the sensor, but it's um, allowing you to have a confirmation of focus. So you get that little um, UI that's a, a box with some arrows, and the arrows tell you whether you need to move the lens left or right. Uh, and then when everything goes green and the arrows match up, you've achieved perfect focus. Um, and that is vital uh, in 4K recording. So that's assisting people who want to do manual? Yep. So they know where it is in focus and they can go there as soon as they want, kind of. Yeah, they can go I mean, there slowly or they can... It is a lot easier to use on the bigger lenses with a focus demand because you can pre-select markers uh, if you are doing a, a, a manual focus. But it's, it, it is perfectly viable to do that on here. And you can move that point of selection around within 80% of the sensor as well. How does dual pixel work? Is that um, something to do with the sensor design, how it's done? Yeah, I mean, basically, during the focus stage, the, each photo site looks at the image separately. So the photo site, the, the, the pixels split itself into two, in effect. Uh, they look at the image together, they decide what it needs to do, some Canon magic takes place inside the camera and the lens gets moved to the appropriate point. And there's all these uh, really great cameras that have dual pixel AF, uh, like the Mark III, uh, what is it called, uh, 5D Mark? Uh, yeah, that's a slightly different, um, it's, it's the same background, if you like, of technology, but obviously those are stills cameras. Uh, these are a, a version for the video camera world. And all those cameras are great, but they've had some issues with pe when people want to do 4K, there was an MJPEG codec, something a little bit yep. hard to use. But this is now a big deal for Canon to get into this space, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, we've, we've a, a had great MP4. 4K 60 codec built in. Yeah, well, we've, we've, had, uh, we've had MP4 capability uh, in other cameras, but obviously now it's just the, the 4K file size. One thing that I'm wondering is, uh, you have this wide, uh, you even have, I think, a logo about it. Uh, it's called uh, Wide uh, Dynamic Range. Yeah. What do you call this? Uh, uh, so that first came in the C100. 
as a firmware update, I believe. Um, and it's really where that camera was aimed at. So the people who wanted to use it to film weddings and social independence, anything that they wanted a super 35mm sensor look to. Um, what they would do is... Um, sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought there. Uh, oh, wide dynamic yeah. range, that was it. Yeah. Sorry, somebody just... Yeah. Uh, so the wide dynamic range was brought in because those cameras featured the Canon log curve. The thing with Canon log is, yes, it gives you 12 stops or 15 stops of dynamic range depending on the camera, um, but you have to grade that to get the best from it. And the guys that were using the C100 really may not have had the time or the budget to subject their footage to grading. Wide dynamic range is a setting that changes the curve slightly, but you can use it straight out of the camera with approximately a BT709 <laughs> values attached to that footage. Does that have anything to do with HDR or HLG? Nothing at all. HDR? Nothing at all. It's not to do with no. that. No, no. A lot of people get confused on that. So you can realistically and truthfully, you can make an HDR workflow out of any footage. It can be standard definition. It won't look very nice, but you can do it. The point is that when you're coming into a high dynamic range workflow, it's the output. It's not even the output from the camera is high dynamic range. It's just output. The high dynamic range comes from what you do to that footage when it gets into the post-production stream. So to get the best value or the best uh, impact of HDR, you need the most information. And that's when you start looking more into the Cinema EOS cameras uh, because you've got a massive color space, a massive color gamut, massive color matrix options and a big white dynamic range from the Canon Log 2. But if I choose the wide dynamic range mode to film my videos with this, yeah, it's not again, something, it's not, I cannot consider it to be kind of like an HDR output. No, because, it's, because it doesn't do HDR, HDR is not an output from a camera, it's a workflow value. The wide dynamic range will give you a wide dynamic range image, which if you wanted to enter into HDR workflow afterwards, would give you more information to play with, but it still wouldn't be as good as shooting Canon Log, Cinema Gamut, and Neutral Color Matrix. This can't do Canon Log. No. It doesn't do the no. no. But uh, uh, if, if I shoot the wide uh, wide dynamic range, yep. is it going to look better in the uh, screens? That will be very subjective. That's the one thing with this business, it's very subjective. It will give you an image that is designed to look good on a commercial TV straight from the camera. Nice. So, uh, so this is arriving very soon. How, how soon can people uh, buy this one? We are looking at this going on sale towards the end of the year. So towards the end of the year, and what's the price? Price is. But the thing is, is it around the? Yeah, we get yeah. That. Some, uh, some things because it depends on the region, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, we do try to have a sort of standard European price in where we can, uh, but yeah. obviously we do get fluctuations. Um, and how did you change? How do you, you just close it right there? Yeah. There. It's nice to be able to close the, the lens cover. That's a. It's called XF. Yeah. Uh, there was an XF 300 before. Yep. So it's kind of like the new. No, the XF 300 is still going. Uh, it's not a replacement yeah. for that. It's uh, just uh, another camera in the range to give you that 4K capability. Yep, cool. Uh, so the XF 405, we're expecting that to retail around about 3699. 3699? Yeah, plus tax. Euros? Euros. And uh, the 400, about 3199. All right. Cool. Right there. There it is. I'm red shirt. They might be better placed.